everybody, I'm Jo from Jo's Kitchen and I'm back for the first time in ages with a cookbook haul. So it's autumn and it's going up to Christmas next week for us, it's half term, I think some people have already had it this week. So yeah, so this is my selection of cookbooks I've had since all the way in spring actually, I can't even remember the last time I did a cookbook haul. So some of these are new, some of these are old favourites and some of them are just books I've picked up as I've been out and about and I've had a few adventures. I'll go on about now do we go on about as we go through uh yeah so sorry i haven't been here for a while but you know how life is i'm hoping to be back here a bit more soon with a few more videos and stuff so please stay tuned and i hopefully will not have another six months or whatever it's been gap again so anyway the first book i'd like to bring you is actually an old one it's 20 years old it's the how to eat by nigella it the pleasures and principles of good food now I don't know if you can see it, but at the top it does actually say Vintage Nigella. It's been re-released because it's 20 years old and it's in paperback. Okay, so, and this is actually called a Reader's Edition. So it is paperback and from what I've seen on the Amazon reviews and to be honest what I've been doing with it is it's more like a book that you can read yourself as like a bedtime book. It's obviously got recipes and that in it, but it's also got loads of stories. Uh, I'm going to spoil it for you now. There are no pictures, but... Uh, it's beautiful. For those of you who remember her very first series, Nigella Bites, which I do, it was one of the reasons I actually started cooking, was watching that series. It's got all, all the recipes from there and it kind of, I always feel nostalgic whenever I watch those recipes from when I was little, well, younger, I was a teenager when they came out. So and it's got lots of Italian stuff, it's got lots of basic stuff in it. Uh, there's lots of, uh, there's even a whole session on, Chris, on a whole chapter on Christmas, so I mean, I can't really show you anything because it is just words, but there's like Christmas cream of puddings. She's got Christmassy goose, I mean the Christmas chapter, but there's also recipes for like crumble. There's a mackerel base inside the recipe that I want to do. Uh, she even puts suggestions for menus that you can put together. So it is a really, really good book and I can see why they've re-released it. And if it's not in your collection like it wasn't in mine, then I suggest going and getting it. The next book I've got is actually another vintage Nigella. It's the How to Be a Domestic Goddess. I've wanted this book for ages and never actually purchased it. So I just thought I bit the bullet and brought it with the same as the How to Eat. So now this one is a proper cookbook. Not that that one isn't a proper cookbook, but this one is a proper cookbook. It's a, you would imagine it a hardback book with pictures. And yeah, I mean, I know being British we like a trifle. I mean, doesn't that look beautiful, cherry trifle? And uh, oh, there's lots of oh, what else can we find? Panel chocolat pudding. Doesn't that look beautiful? Sorry, there's a bit of reflection on the lens there. I am trying my best. It's been a while since I've done one of these. And what else is there? Peanut butter squares. I mean, I personally don't like peanut butter, but they look quite nice to me. Might have to give them a go. You never know. Might change my mind. But this has also got a few of her older recipes as well from her first couple of series, like the Coca-Cola cake. I think she did. And there's basics like Christmas cake and that in there. Same as the other book. And there's like game pie and that kind of thing. So it is proper hems proper cooking, as far as I'm concerned. So have a look at Nigella if you haven't looked at her before. So she's re-releasing a bit, and this is a re-release version as well. Okay. And it actually says on the back the classic that launched a thousand cupcakes, which I'm sure it probably did. So next book is one I've had for a while. So I do apologise to the people who sent me this. This one was one I actually got to review. Some of these books I've purchased myself. This is Cuba the Kit Cookbook. I'm not even going to pronounce who wrote it, but you can read it in the blog post that I will do to accompany this. The link will be below. So yeah, if you've ever been on holiday to Cuba or the Caribbean in general and you want to require, like them to cook the food at home, then this is a book for you. I've never been to Cuba, but I have been to the Dominican Republic, which is nearby. So, yeah, so there's like tender shredded beef there, which looks beautiful. It has even got its, uh, it gives you a bit of history about the dish as well, and it tells you what to serve it with. Uh, oxtail stew, sounds quite good. Uh, salads, banana mince salad, sounds a bit unusual, but might be worth a go if you like bananas. Festive pasta salad, and what I like about it as well is that it's, there's all these beautiful shots that show you Cuba as well. So, and to be honest, after reading the book, I did really, really want to go. So, I will definitely be doing some cooking for this. I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but I will be. 
and there's all kinds of desserts there's a yucca flan cake that sounds quite nice and there's also i've just noticed on this page an impossible dessert which to me sounds uh quite interesting to make like i said not everything has pictures but or churros we all love a good churros don't we i do so yeah i'll probably definitely give those a go because they look gorgeous so yeah it's a very big book and uh it does i think it is one that i'm going to start using quite a lot once i actually get into using it i go through stages with cookbooks i just dip and dab out of them so but yeah i'll definitely be using this one so pick that one up if you haven't already uh, this one is a rather interesting book. It's called My Little Sous Chef. Now it's actually two books in one. So I'm going to show you this one first. This is the adult version of the cookbook. This is a fairly bog standard sort of cookbook thing. Ingredients, directions and a picture of the recipe. So that's for the adults. So you can follow that book. But then there's also a book here for the children which is completely different. So you will see that it tells you that it's got a kids book and it's all done with pictures. So I don't know how well you can see it. So, but it gives you the ingredients in pictures and words, and then it gives you the instructions in pictures too. So it's like washed tomato and basil leaves, okay, and that kind of thing. So I showed this to Thomas and he absolutely loved this. So I think next week, as it being half term, we're probably going to end up cooking for this because he does seem to like cooking. And Daniel's getting into it too now. So it's just a really, they're both like really beautiful books. So, and I do hope it will get my kids cooking. So yeah, I might even film a vlog of us cooking one of these recipes if I can. So you can see how good it is. Okay, next one is, I never know how to pronounce his name right, it's Dernell Skian, I think is how it is. I did meet him a couple of years ago at a food blogging conference and he's released his new book called Meals in Minutes. And he's saying 90 stuff, now that, Big title on the site on the thing is 90 suppers from scratch, 15 minutes prep. Now I'm a busy mum, working mum, I'm now there's quite a few hours of you that are. And even if you're not a parent, you're generally busy anyway, so we need quick cook meals. Now what I do like about this is the recipes in here are actually quite quick to make new. So there's pan fried scallops with garlic butter and champ. So and that to me sounds lovely. So, and it hands on time 15 minutes, cook time 20 minutes. So, there's nothing you can do there really. So, and uh, it's all we've got core ingredients. He's got ingredients that you might not have, and then he's got core ingredients. So, he does assume that you've got a bit of a stock store cupboard for this. So, but it's really good. I mean, the pictures, I mean, Donnell's, he's a food photographer in his own right, and he does really beautiful shots. So, um, I know he didn't shoot all these himself, but he would probably would have done most of them so there is also a chapter in here i can't find it at the moment on shortcut ingredients so and so like using like a few cheat ingredients like fresh stuffed pasta and that kind of thing so the series has been on good food as well so i did actually quite like it and i do need to look at this book a bit more because i think it will save me some time in the kitchen <coughs> oh and i've been yabbing on for eight minutes and i've still got a big pile of cookbooks to go so the next one is by Dan Toombs, it's Curry Guy, he's already released a book, I think I put his other book in one of my other cookbook hauls, it's called Easy. Uh, this one is quite a good book and I do really need to give some of these a go because I love curry. So, Salmon Kofta Buna, that looks quite interesting. The only thing that scares me about this book, and I think it is just because that's Indian cooking in general is because is that some of the ingredients lists are a bit large but I get a bit freaked out by that in any book but some of the stuff is actually quite simple so there's like recipes for how to make jalfrezi sauce and that which is quite a popular Indian dish and there is like quick stir fried lamb so and there is more to be honest there's probably more stuff in here that I would attempt than what there was in his first book because it is easy so it says so I do actually want to give these a go so it is one of my mission before Christmas to try and give one of these curry recipes a go at least. So yeah, it's really good. He's got a really good blog as well. So check him out, the curry guy. Uh, the next book's another blogger who's actually a friend, Kiara Atwell, My Fussy Eater. Uh, her blog, I know, gets hundreds of thousands of hits a year. Uh, and it's basically for anybody who's got fussy children or children who want to try different things and stuff because I don't know about you but we're going through an interesting stage at the moment where Thomas who 
seven next week will try anything but Daniel who's nearly five will not try anything new so I have tried a couple of recipes from this book I did try the curry and they both ate it and they both enjoyed it so but there's lots of things there's stuff you can do here for lunch there's broccoli and cheese quesadilla tropical chicken burger so the stuff in the was also an after school like snacks chapter and like a lunch box kind of idea like lunchbox ideas, there's apple and carrot chicken balls here. So she suggested it might just be finger food, just if they want to have a few nibbles and stuff. So, fruity vegetable curry, that's actually the dish that I tried. The kids did like that, and I will be making that again soon. So, if you've got fussy kids, or even just want to try cooking something different for your own children, then give this book a go. Tell Kiara I sent you. Okay. The next one is probably a book not, not everyone will have heard of. Uh, as you know it's Need a Remembrance Sunday it's actually been a hundred years since the end of World War One so it's the World War One centenary and it's also a hundred years of the RAF now recently we went to an event in Birmingham where they had all the RAF, all the RAF planes there, and we actually saw the first ever RAF plane that came into existence and while I was there I found this cookbook it's called the RAF 100 cookbook it's got recipes from celebrity chefs in here. I'm trying to find one with a celebrity chef in it. But it's also got recipes from wherever the RAF have been around the world. I should say the RAF are our Royal Air Force if you didn't know. So there's like Brunel here and there's a recipe and then so this is so and then there's also a story with it too and so what they did is they asked celebrity chefs so there's passion fruit pavel over here by somebody called sophie wright she's apparently a food writer so she's obviously not going to do the ref which she's been asked to do a recipe and there's also recipes from from like squadron leaders and that within the raf and recipes from the country that they've been to so like feta and spinach filo pie so and it is a really good book so all the proceeds from the side of this book go back into go to the RAF charity you have to excuse me I can't remember exactly which chair what the charity is called so but it's a hundred years a hundred countries and a hundred recipes and my book was actually signed but I can't find where they signed it there it is. So they did actually sign it. Those are the two men from the RAF who came up with the idea for the book. And uh, yeah, like I say, it all goes to charity. So I'm guessing you can probably pick this up on their website. I will try and put a link to it in my blog post, which will be down below. So, but if you want to support a worthy cause, support the people who go out and defend our country, then this is a really good book. So. Apparently there is also recipes from James Martin, Tom Kerridge and Cyrus Tardiwala, however you say his name, in here. So, it is worth a look. So, and thank you to the nice men at the RAF who signed it for me. Now this next one's another classic. This is actually the Hairy Bikers cookbook. This is the first ever cookbook that the Hairy Bikers ever did. As you know, I'm a big Hairy Bikers fan and when I saw this appear on eBay, actually my stepdad saw it appear on eBay, he bought it for me. It was like £3. So, and yet again, I look at this more with nostalgia, really, because uh, I've just opened it up on the recipe I actually want to try, actually. Lime Queen Scallop Sunbade in Tequila. I really want to give that a go. So, but I just remember watching it, like, 10, 15 years ago, however long the Hairy Bikers have been going now. I can't remember. But either way, it's their very first cookbook. If you can pick it up cheap, I reckon it's worth a go. It's got stuff on their travels. There's lots of stories in there. And yeah, it's really good. And they have got a new book coming out soon called British Classics that I will probably be getting to. So, yeah, excuse me. <coughs> and I've been yapping on for 40 minutes. I'm going to try and wrap this up now. Uh, the husband and I have been on a bit of a trying to lose weight. So I brought Tom Kerridge's Lose Weight for Good. I will be honest and say I've only tried one recipe out of it, which I saw him do at the Good Food Show in the summer. But there are lots of beautiful recipes in here that I need to try. Some of it though does require a bit more prep than what I might necessarily have time for, like you want you to 
spoil the whole chicken thingy which although once you've done it I will admit and say it probably will save you time so I'm just trying to find the recipe that I wanted to show you so because I did actually make the salt and pepper squid from this book because I saw it at the good food show let's find it I've gone and looked at the index now so I saw him make it at the good food show it looked really good so I gave it to go myself there you go. That's the recipe that I made. Salt and pepper squid with you at Simeo. It was very tasty. And it was quite easy to do. A bit messy with the bread crumbing and that, but doing the pan out bread crumbs always is. So yeah, it is really good. I need to try a few more recipes out of this, but yeah, perhaps next time a little less prep on some of the things, perhaps possibly Tom, but that's me being really, really picky. Okay. I'm going to swap these around. In July we went to Cornwall on holiday and uh, while I was there we went to Padstow and what happened there was Rick Stein happened to be there on the day I was there. Now I'm 99% sure I featured this book in a previous cookbook, cookbook haul but I just wanted to show you it. It's Rick Stein's The Road to Mexico. This was his last TV series that was on I think it was last winter but he, he did a book signing in Padstow so and I got him to sign it for me. So look there you go signature and I will insert a photo somewhere around here so to prove that I did meet him I had about 30 seconds I was very very startled but he is very okay I've no idea what happened there but my recording just died but anyway here we go uh Jack Stein's world on a plate I was just saying if you didn't know it's Jack Stein's son I got this when we went to Padstow and I didn't know but it was but actually when I got it home I realised he'd already signed it so I've got a Jack Stein, Jack Stein sign book as well. I didn't get to meet him, but anyway, it's, uh, it's basically recipes from his travels around the world. Crispy soft shell crab salad with peanut chilli sauce, because Rick Stein and the family took it, took their children around the world quite a bit as they were growing up. But there's also uh, lamb shoulder with white miso cream and chicory, and also buco. It's very good, beautiful. And... Yeah, there's lots of stories in here. Each little recipe's got a little bit at the top. Some bit obviously relates to his dad, some bit relates to his own experiences and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of new classics, new takes on British classics, but then there's also lots of worldwide books in here as well. So I will be trying some from this book as well. So I will get back to you, but it is a good book. And if you are a fan of Rick Stein, then you will probably like Jack's book as well. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. I've been yapping on for about 17 minutes, so if you're still with me, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be back with another cookbook soon and perhaps sort of what I eat in a week, sort of that fidget type videos again and perhaps even a grocery haul. Just let me know what you think. Yay, nay, yeah, not really bothered. So thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you again soon. And I'm sorry I don't know what happened just, but my camera died, so I'm going to put this together in editing. So thank you very much and I will see you again soon. Bye!